So, so far we have seen the definition of random variables, probabilities, and the rules for manipulating the probability. But one question remains unanswered, and that is how, to, uh, how do we assign the values of the probability distributions? And this uh, can be easily done over some parameters learned from data. What this means is that uh, we are going to parameterize, use some parameterized representation of the probability distribution, which we denote as a P of X over here. Now, an example here would be to uh, uh, parameterize the probability distribution of the height of American women that are aged between uh, 30 to 39. And we can see that, suppose that we have uh, between uh, uh, the a sample size or, or a sample group of the American women uh, between this range of edge, and we are going to uh, plot the frequency of the their height uh, of this uh, uh, this particular uh, sample size, and we can see that it actually roughly follows a, a normal distribution or Gaussian distribution, and uh, hence we can parameterize this. Uh, probability distribution as a probability distribution p of x using the normal distribution which is parameterized by two parameters mean the mean and the variance uh, denoted as mu and sigma square uh, respectively and we'll see in the subsequent lecture on how we learn these parameters even for a huge number of uh, random variable in this probability uh, distribution now we'll look at some common probability distributions that are uh, used for discrete and uh, continuous random variables. We'll look at the uh, Bernoulli distribution. It, uh, it represents the, a single binary random variable, which we denote as X over here, where X takes a binary state of zero or one. So this could be the flipping of a coin where uh, head is represented as zero and tail is represented as one. Uh, so this is this uh, distribution is parameterized by a single parameter, which is uh, denoted as lambda, which takes a range of zero to one. So here, uh, what it means is that, uh, let's say if uh, the probability, we say that the probability of X equals to zero condition upon, of course, the parameter. Uh, so uh, it will be equals to one minus lambda where lambda is the hyperparameter between 0 and 1, and the probability of uh, x equals to 1 is equals to lambda itself. So this means that since x takes only two states, 0 or 1, the total probability here, we can verify that it's 1 minus lambda plus lambda, and that must be equals to 1, which makes it a valid probability. So the probability distribution can then be written as uh, the probability of x equals to lambda to the power of x, uh, multiplied by 1 minus lambda to the power of 1 minus lambda. So we can see that uh, here, uh, if x is equal to 0, what this means is that I would have a lambda to the power of 0, 1 minus lambda to the power of 1, and that would give me 1 minus lambda, which is equivalent to the first case here. And if it is 1, then I will see that uh, the overall probability would be equal to lambda. So this is also uh, represented uh, graphically using the this uh, histogram over here. And in the case where the random variable is discrete, but it contains more than uh, one, uh, more than a binary state, uh, we will use the categorical uh, distribution uh, to represent this, uh, where x takes on one out of the k possibly mutually exclusive uh, states. For example, a k-faced uh, dice, where uh, we will use x, uh, we will represent x as a k-dimensional vector. This is a basis vector, where uh, suppose that k equals to 5, then we will take uh, 1, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0 as the first state, and then 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 as the second state, and so on and so forth. And here, x equals to when x equals to the third state, we will take 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Uh, and here, uh, there are altogether k parameters for this for the categorical uh, distribution of, uh, that corresponds one hyperparameter, one parameter 
that corresponds to each particular state in the one of the in the k possible mutually exclusive states and uh, each of these lambda since they represent a probability it better be more than or equals to zero and uh, the sum of all these uh, parameters should be equals to one since they represent probability the total probability needs to be one and we denote this as the probability of x equals to a certain state uh, equals to lambda k where each one of these lambda simply means the refers to the probability of x taking that particular state or otherwise it can be written as uh, the product of lambda to the power of k uh, xk so here this xk will be equals to one when we are talking about x equals to xk over here and hence it will refer to that probability that corresponds to that particular state the next uh, distribution that we look at is the univariate normal distribution the commonly uh, seen univariate normal distribution of, which is otherwise known as the Gaussian distribution and this describes the probability distribution of a single continuous random variable x where x is in a real value so we all know that uh, very well that this uh, Gaussian distribution is parameterized by two parameters mu and sigma which represents the mean and standard deviation or sigma square that represents the uh, variance of the univariate uh, random variable continuous random variable and this is given by this equation the this function over here where uh, where a here it's uh, always uh, is in a the real number because this is the state of the random variable and uh, we can see that uh, this can be rewritten as uh, uh, and into this form over here uh, a shorthand uh, representation so the final distribution that we are looking at to, uh, in this lecture would be the multivariate normal distribution where the uh, random variable would be a continuous random variable that uh, or is of d dimension uh, uh, of d dimensions and uh, this uh, of course it would also have a d dimension uh, mean of mu uh, and a d by d uh, symmetrical positive uh, definite covariance matrix which we represent as a sigma over here and uh, the parameterization of this uh, this uh, probability distribution is given by this particular equation we can see that the covariance matrix can take three different forms spherical diagonal and full covariance matrix and in the case of a spherical covariance matrix we have a diagonal uh, matrix where the off diagonals are zero and every entry in the diagonal terms would be the same what this means is that uh, there's an equal uh, uncertainty for both the random variables in, in this particular case since it's a two by two uh, covariance matrix there are two random variables and the two random variables would have equal um, and independent uh, covariances and in the diagonal uh, matrix where there are different uh, the, there are different uncertainty sigma 1 and sigma 2 what this means is that uh, there is in one of the dimension uh, for example in this particular in this particular case here we have x uh, uh, the range over x2 has a bigger range over here the spread over x2 is a bigger spread over here so this means that the x2 the random variable x2 is less certain than x1 itself we can see that uh, if we were to project this and draw it in the uh, in, in one dimension gaussian this gaussian would have a higher spread compared to this uh, gaussian here and this represents x2 and this represents x1 over here and in the third case where they are full uh, this is a full covariance matrix this means that the correlation between x1 and x2 exists and the, hence the off diagonal terms are no longer uh, zero this means that uh, uh, in, in terms of the plotting of the covariance in 2d we can see that now the uh, error distribution the uncertainty distribution is tilted to a certain angle there's a certain angle over here 
that is tutored. This means that there is a correlation of uh, the uncertainty in X2, it would affect the uncertainty in X1 over here. Now, uh, after looking at the distributions for the random variables, we'll look at another uh, distribution which we call the conjugate distribution that is very important for finding modeling the parameters of the probability of the distributions. So these conjugate distributions can also be seen as a prior distribution as a as a prior distribution to the parameters in our distributions for the random variable. So for example, uh, in the random variable, uh, we have, uh, let's say, a univariate uh, random variable that follows a normal distribution. We, in the distribution of this random variable, we write it as uh, x condition upon mu and sigma square with two uh, distributions. So this is a likelihood. Uh, this can be treated as a likelihood function or a likelihood distribution. And the conjugate distribution will give us a prior, since we are doing Bayesian over here, uh, it's a Bayesian treatment. So the conjugate distribution will give us a prior over mu and sigma square. And uh, we'll see that the definition or the structure of this conjugate distribution is unique to the corresponding likelihood function. What this means is that for every likelihood function, there is a certain uh, conjugate distribution that models the distribution, the prior distribution of the its parameters. For example, in Bernoulli, we would have a, a beta distribution that models the Bernoulli distribution. And this uh, it's defined such that the product of the probability distribution and its conjugate has the same form as the conjugate times a constant. And this we will see later that uh, it actually allows us to simplify a lot of uh, computations. And of course, there are also parameters within the conjugate distribution and these are known as hyperparameters because usually we fix this hyperparameters by hand and they are not modeled or as a probability distribution neither are they learned from any uh, data so the, in, there are two importance of uh, conjugate distribution the first would be to model the posterior distribution of the unknown parameters the parameters of the uh, distribution of the random variables and this would be this posterior distribution condition upon what is observed, the data that is observed, would be useful for us to learn the parameters uh, in uh, from data, as we will see in the subsequent uh, lectures. But now, let's recall that Bayes' rules uh, gives the conditional probability or the posterior probability of the parameters uh, as uh, theta condition upon x, and this can be written in terms of the likelihood so this guy here is the likelihood, which is which is nothing but just the uh, distribution of the uh, random variable x that we have seen earlier, and multiplied by a prior distribution. So this prior distribution would be our conjugate uh, distribution, uh, divided by a normalizer, which also consists of the likelihood and the conjugate distribution itself. So in this particular case, imagine that we have a prior distribution over the parameters which arbitrarily chosen, what we will end up with in this particular form of the Bayes rule would be a very complicated mathematics that uh, we wouldn't be able to ev uh, evaluate this in a closed form, for example. And then the representation of this posterior distribution would be a mess. So the design consideration or the way that when uh, scientists came up with this, uh, the choice of the conjugate uh, likelihood or the conjugate distribution to the likelihood is to simplify this, the mathematics of this, as we'll see in the example later on. And the second importance of a conjugate distribution is the marginalization over parameters. So for example, I'm given X here, which I represents all the observed data 
or the observed data. And X star here is the predictive is the predictive distribution or predictive random variable to denote the next X that I'm going to, the next step state of X that I'm going to observe. So this probability here is the predictive density, the predictive, uh, that probability distribution for predicting the next X condition that upon that we have observed n number of uh, observations for the random variable X. And this can be rewritten into an integral form of the likelihood function. So this is the likelihood that we have uh, seen. And this is also the distribution of the random variable itself multiplied by the posterior distribution. Multiplied by the posterior distribution of data condition upon X. And this posterior over here can be also chosen as a conjugate to the other term, to the likelihood term over here. So we'll see that uh, we will see that in, in this case, uh, if the conjugate is chosen correctly, then the math of this integration would be a lot simpler. And uh, here is a derivation of why the predictive density, as I've shown earlier on uh, in the previous slide, equals to this form over here, the integral form over here. So we'll make use of the conditional probability, the marginal probability that we have learned uh, earlier to re-evaluate this, re return into this particular form over here. And then uh, we have to also make use of what we call the, condi uh, the conditional independence to evaluate the last step over here. So this, I will talk about it in lecture uh, two in more detail. Now, uh, let's look at some conjugate distributions to the uh, distributions of the random variable that we have defined earlier on. So in the case uh, of a Bernoulli distribution, uh, where X would be a binary state, and we saw that earlier on that uh, in the Bernoulli distribution, there is only one parameter, which is lambda. And this particular uh, parameter, the conjugate distribution would be a beta distribution. What this means is that I'm defining a prior distribution over lambda over here. And since uh, lambda is a, a, a binary state, I would have uh, defined it using a beta distribution given by uh, this. And we can see that uh, this uh, tau over here is actually a gamma function def defined by this. And uh, there are two hyperparameters alpha and beta, which is more than zero. So here's some example of the different values of uh, alpha and beta uh, plotted out for the beta distribution. We can see that uh, if alpha and uh, if alpha and beta are uh, supposed to be, uh, so let's say take a value of 10 and 10, for example, uh, these are hyperparameters that we set by hand. So what this means is that if we set uh, alpha and beta to be 10 and 10 respectively, we are pretty much confident that lambda is going to take a value of uh, 0 0.5. And it has a very low probability of taking uh, either 0 or 1. Similarly, if we set, uh, say for example, if we are very confident that uh, lambda is going to take a small value, uh, it's going to take a small value, then we would choose uh, alpha and beta to be 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 respectively. We can see that there's a higher probability where lambda is going to take a small value compared to lambda taking a, a large value over here. And if we, in the case where we do not have any information, that means that we do not have any prior knowledge of the uh, of lambda, then we will assign alpha and beta to be one and one. We can see that this is a uniform distribution. That means that it's equally likely for lambda to take any value from zero to one. Here's the conjugate distribution for the categorical distribution where the random variable takes one out of k state. And uh, this conjugate distribution would be the Dirichlet distribution. And it's defined over k parameters of the categorical distribution 
where lambda k, each one of these uh, parameter would be in the range of uh, 0 and 1 and the sum should be uh, of lambda k should be equals to 1. So here uh, the categorical, the this conjugate distribution over the categorical distribution simply means that I want to find the prior probability of the all the parameters lambda 1 to lambda k and this is given by a Dirichlet uh, distribution over here. So the Dirichlet distribution simply define a simplex that is given by this case over here where k equals to 3. I have That means that I have uh, three states in my categorical distribution and here uh, we can see that uh, there are two, there are altogether k hyperparameters alpha uh, 1 to k where each one of this alpha is more than zero and suppose that k equals to 3 we saw earlier that this is a simplex the distribution uh, the Dirichlet distribution is actually a simplex and uh, in this case if we do not have any prior information about the hyper uh, about the parameters then we'll set the hyperparameters to be 1 1 1 so we can get a uniform distribution over all possible states of lambda over here now suppose that we have a, a strong prior intuition or strong prior that uh, knowledge that lambda is going to take uh, one third for example then we're going to set uh, alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 to be 4 so this is a point where it's corresponding to the center of this simplex where lambda here each lambda is simply equals to one third uh, approximately and uh, similarly there's also a conjugate distribution for the uh, for the univariate normal distribution over uh, defined over the two parameters of uh, mu and sigma square uh, and uh, this is the uh, normal inverse uh, gamma distribution so what this means is that I want to find the uh, prior distribution over my parameters mu and sigma over here and this is given by the normal inverse gamma distribution so we can see that uh, by changing the hyperparameters uh, or four hyperparameters in this case here well, which is alpha beta and gamma and uh, delta uh, we will change the distribution the confidence of uh, whether mu and sigma square takes a certain value and uh, now finally we will look at the conjugate distribution for the multivariate uh, normal distribution and which is defined on the, the d dimensional mu and the d by d uh, dimensional sigma the covariance of this multivariate uh, normal distribution so we want to find the prior distribution over mu and sigma and this is given by the normal inverse Vishart uh, distribution which is uh, parameterized by four hyperparameters uh, alpha uh, and this uh, psi has gamma and delta which are in the, uh, the first one the first term is a scalar and then the second term is a positive uh, definite d by d matrix the third term over here is a scalar and the final term over here is a d-dimensional vector and uh, we can see that uh, similarly by changing by changing the hyperparameters we will get different distribution of the parameters in a multi uh, variate Gaussian distribution now let's look at the, an example of the conjugate distribution on the uh, normal distribution on a univariate normal distribution the posterior uh, so here what we want to find is the posterior distribution of mu and sigma that means that it's uh, the posterior distribution of mu and sigma condition upon the observation x and this is what we want to find from a Gauss univariate uh, Gaussian distribution so using the base rule we can rewrite this we have seen this earlier that we can rewrite this into uh, this form over here so here uh, this term here we assume that uh, the observation x which we each which we denote each observation as xi uh, so this is one observation, ith observation of the random variable x and we assume that there are n observations altogether and we also further assume that these observations are iid 
they are uh, independent and identically uh, distributed. And then multiply by the prior uh, distribution, which is our conjugate distribution of uh, data over here, and divided by the normalizer. So uh, here we can see that the numerator terms here, where which consists of these two terms multiplied together, it's equivalent to, since this is our likelihood term, uh, which is the univariate normal distribution, and this is our prior term, uh, which is the conjugate uh, distribution. So, which is the conjugate uh, distribution over here. And this is normal distribution. And of course, this is the normal inverse gamma uh, distribution over mu and sigma. So, evaluating this term, we can see that uh, if you work out the mathematics, which I will leave it to you uh, to work it out, we'll see that uh, these two terms, after multiplying it together, it will take a form of the conjugate distribution. So, this uh, form here, the final form would be in terms of the conjugate distribution, the same as the conjugate distribution, which is a normal inverse gamma distribution, multiplied by a set of uh, constant. So this set of constant, after multi because these two are exponential, so we can see that uh, we can lump the exponential together and simply uh, multiply or add uh, the these two terms that are within the exponential uh, together. So we can see that uh, the, uh, what happens here is that we'll end up with a, a single exponential here, which is in the form of the normal inverse gamma distribution. And all the, param the, all the parameters and hyperparameters which are constant uh, uh, can be uh, factorized out into the constant term over here. So we can see that the constant term consists of alpha uh, gamma, which is the hyperparameter, and then uh, delta, and as well as the as well as the observed uh, random variable x i, which will remain uh, fixed in the in this uh, in, in this equation over here. And after that, we will put it into the base rule, where we see that the we see that the numerator and the denominator, they both take the same form because of this term over here, the similar terms over here. And we see that uh, since this is a constant, which means that it's independent of mu and sigma, we can pull it out from the double integration over the parameters of the distribution. And uh, finally, this part here, the constants would cancel off from the denominator and the numerator. And then, the, this term over here, over the double integral, it will be equals to 1 because I'm integrating over mu and sigma square. And uh, what I will be remaining would be the posterior distribution and expression for the posterior distribution here, which is equivalent to the, have the same form. It has the same form as the our conjugate uh, distribution, that is the normalized inverse gamma distribution. Now in the second example, we'll look at the predictive density for a univariate Gaussian distribution. And we saw that the predictive density is given by uh, this equation over here, where this is actually our data or parameter of the distribution. Uh, since it's a Gaussian distribution, univariate Gaussian distribution, it is uh, parameterized by mu and sigma square. And now, uh, we can replace this guy over here, the first term over here, with our uh, probability distribution for the univariate random uh, variable, uh, denoted by this term over here. And then the second term would be the prior distribution, the conjugate distribution of the of mu and uh, sigma square. And this would be directly given by the normal inverse gamma distribution that we've seen here. So. Uh, we have seen earlier on that uh, the multiplication of the two, uh, the distribution, probability distribution with its, with its conjugate, you will end up to be a constant multiplied by a term which takes the same form as the conjugate distribution over here. So we can factorize this constant term out and then uh, take a double integration of this over this term, the normal inverse gamma term over mu and sigma, which will sum out to one. So this means that the final predictive density 
would be a constant uh, which is a function of x star x1 and all the way to xn where xn where x1 to xn here are our observed data so this means that we will have a since this becomes a function of x star this means that this term over here would be a predictive density of x star that means that uh, we are going to find the probability of x star taking a certain state in the uh, in the next time step or in the next observation and we saw that uh, this can be uh, this is a constant uh, and where all the constant terms uh, are given by the hyperparameters that was defined earlier on so uh, alpha tilde uh, beta tilde and these two terms tilde over here it's actually given by the uh, this uh, prior positive uh, the is actually given by the positive distribution of the parameters that we have seen earlier and uh, so in summary we have looked at uh, the definitions of random variables and joint probabilities and how to use this to describe uncertain uh, quantities and then we have explained the basic rules of probabilities in particular the sum product based independence and expectation rules and we will look at some of the common probability distributions and its conjugates uh, and uh, but in this particular lecture we have only looked at it based on uh, from a perspective of a small number of random variables and in the subsequent lectures we'll look at the definitions of uh, graphical models and how to model the joint probability distribution and to do inference of this joint probability distribution of a large number of uh, random variables in a tractable and efficient way.